Millions of voters stood in line in Kenya to choose their next president in a tightly contested general election, which has been marred by an isolated violence. The Elections Commission said some polling stations would remain open late to accommodate those that are still in line. Now, voters have tried their best to avoid a repeat of the 2007 election in which the nation plunged into ethnic violence after results of election were disputed. But despite all the precautions, a group of heavily armed men attacked a police post in the port city of Mombasa just some hours before the polls opened, killing at least 10 people, including two police officers. The Prime Minister, Rayla Odinga, has blamed the attack on the Mombasa Republican Council, a separatist group that wants Mombasa, the second largest city in Kenya and its surrounding coastal area, to secede. Welcome to Sahara TV's coverage of the Kenyan election. My name is Adiola Fayoum. Stay tuned as we bring you a cross-section of opinions about the ongoing election today. Now, our first guest today is is Peter Grister. He's actually a foreign correspondent with Al Jazeera. He's worked in several countries, including Afghanistan, C Central Asia, um, Iraq, and so on. He's presently based in Africa, where he covers the Horn of Africa, including Somalia, Eritrea, Djibouti, South Sudan, just to name a few. Today, he's in Kenya, covering this election from Kisumu, and he's going to tell us what has been going on on ground. Peter, welcome to Sahara TV. Thanks very much. Yeah. Well, Peter, let's just start from there. Can you tell us, I mean, today is the big day that we've all been looking forward to, and uh, if you can just tell us what has been going on today, what have you seen so far, what's the situation like on ground? Well, here in far western Kenya, the situation has been remarkably stable. Um, everyone remembers, of course, the violence of 2007, 2008, as you've already mentioned. And I think there was a lot of nervousness about the way this particular poll would go. Um, but the... The, the, all of the reports we've been getting, everything we've seen uh, here in, in the far west uh, and across the and across most of the country, apart from those uh, a few isolated incidents on the coast, has been a, a remarkably stable, remarkably efficient, and remarkably optimistic uh, election. We've seen a turnout of about 70% of the uh, registered voters, um, which is pretty high by by any standards. Um, the numbers are still coming in, but that's what the Independent Elections and Boundaries Commission is telling us. I see. Uh, we saw people lining up. Yeah, we saw we saw people lining up in the sun for for, for seven, eight, sometimes nine hours, wow. waiting to vote. Hmm. Well, um, I'm sure you're also aware of the violence that happened just before the election polls were opened, actually in Mombasa. Uh, what was the reaction of people where you are when they heard about this? Well, people were, were obviously concerned about it, but the thing with Mombasa is that the, the political issues, the separatist issues over there are very, very distinct to the coast. They're very unique to the coast. And so what we saw, the violence that we saw really doesn't apply to the rest of the country. It, it really is um, directly connected with very specific uh, issues um, along the coast itself. And so I think people here were, were shocked and disappointed, mm. but at the same time, we didn't see it as indicative of, of wider problems. I see. Can you tell us about the security measures put in place? I'm sorry, can you say that again? Can you talk about the security measures put in place? The situation... The security, I, sorry, the, the security measures oh, the security put in system, place, yes. yeah. <laughs> Yes, of course. I'm sorry. Yes, uh, look, the, the, the authorities here have been very, very uh, swift to, to, to put uh, security measures in place. They, they moved down re reinforcements, police reinforcements to the coast as soon as those, uh, those the reports of the attacks started to flow in. But um, right elsewhere across the country, and particularly in areas that like the hotspot in the last election, the authorities have moved uh, extra police, uh, in fact, deployed about 100,000 police and security personnel right across the country. A hundred um, thousand, They're also said? very careful to uh, put the resources they need. In a lot, in a lot of cases, mm -hmm. uh, police were unable in the past to uh, respond to, to clients or calls, rather, I see. Uh, mm -hmm. because they had to no bill. Um, uh, um, they, they simply weren't able to mobilize themselves. Peter, did you, did uh, you say that like really a... They've really gone out of their way to improve the communication system, uh -huh. to make sure that all the police have the vehicles, the fuel, the, the resources they need, the communication equipment to okay. respond to any incidents. And so I get the sense here that even if people wanted to take to the street, uh, the authority would, would uh, clamp down for people. Um, Peter, did you say like 100,000 security men? Peter, can you hear me? Hello, Peter? 
Okay, I think that he's having trouble I'm hearing sorry. me. Sorry. Um, lines back there. I'm just getting my voice coming back. Okay, are you are you able to hear me now, Peter? Peter, can you hear me? Okay, um, I don't think that he's able to hear me right now. We'll, we'll keep trying, but just so you know, he's been telling us that in the area I'm where he is, um, there has not been any violence. Peter, can you hear me? Yeah, that there was no violence, I meant to say, and that the violence that happened in Mombasa did not affect uh, the people at his place. That a lot of people still turned out to vote. He was actually telling us that there were about 100,000 policemen and security men that were uh, stationed all across the country today just to make sure that the election goes well. Peter, can you hear me? Hello, Peter, can you hear me? All right. Okay, so uh, we're, just, we're working on getting Peter back, but uh, when he comes back, he'll be able to tell us just a comparison of this election with the 2007 election where there was like a, a great uh, violence that, that broke out after the results were announced and people were not happy with the results. He was actually there during that election as well covering uh, Kenya. So he'll be able to tell us about his experience covering that election and seeing what happened after the election when the violence broke out compared to this election, uh, which has been relatively calm. Okay, I think we have him. Peter, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, welcome back. Yeah. So let's let let's make it quickly. I thought you you mentioned like one hundred thousand uh, security men were put in position today, right? Yeah, that's right. I see. Okay. So since you were there in two thousand and seven, and you know, can you just compare two thousand and seven to today uh, in terms of the people that went out to vote? Were they, were there still like the same amount of people, or do you see more people going out to vote this time around? Now, we see a lot more people going up to vote this time around. Last elections, the, the atmosphere was pretty toxic. Um, mm. I think what happened at the end was it took everyone by surprise, but there was still a much more toxic, much more volatile atmosphere, um, the tribal atmosphere between the communities. And I think I this see. time around, although a lot of people have been very, very concerned about the prospect of, of violence um, and the history of, and Kenya's history with elections, we, we really haven't had that that, that kind of fierce, uh, fierce kind of rivalry that we, we experienced back then. And I think a lot of people have, have got, turned out to vote almost as a way of, of, of challenging the critics, of mm. locking the critics down who, who expected uh, trouble to continue. I see. And when you were there in 2007 and the election broke out, I mean, what was your first reaction? Uh, how did you handle that? Were you expecting it? Were you prepared for it in 2007? No, I, I, no absolutely not. I wasn't expecting it. I mean, I, a lot of people who subsequently said they saw it coming, I suspect, probably didn't see, see it coming. Certainly no one raised the kind of alarm bells that, um, that, that we might have expected if things really were as bad as or people really did see it coming. Um, it was absolutely shocking. Um, and I think this is why we've seen the ICC cases, because there was a degree of organisation that was behind it that uh, was pretty much hidden from view until the results of the elections came out and, and people started to dispute and fight over them. Um, we, again, we don't see that here. And I think for a lot of reasons, yeah. there are the, the, uh, reasons to be optimistic. Um, I see. The International Criminal Court cases, I think, have made a lot of people very cautious. Um, there's been a lot of messages, very persistent messages of peace. Even the candidates have promised to accept the results of the, of the elections, whatever they are, mm -hmm. um, and, and if they have grievances, to take them through the courts rather than onto the streets. Okay, well, Peter, my last question for you today is, uh, seems so far that Kenyatta is leading, and how are people responding to this where you are? Well, it, it, it's still very, very early indeed. We've, we've got about 13% of... The results counted so far. I see. Kenyatta has about 56%, to Raila Odinga's 40%. But those, it, it, that's not unexpected. Um, the results that have started to come in are from areas that would strongly support the Uhuru Kenyatta. And we've noticed that each, as each uh, minute passes, each, uh, each new set of results comes in, the gap between them narrows. So we, we really need to wait until we've got maybe 20, 30%. Remember, this election is incredibly close. Um, the opinion polls just before the elections took place uh, were separating the two leading candidates by only a few tenths of one percent. And so 
it, we may have to wait until well over 50 percent of the results are counted before we, we, we have any clear indication of how this might turn out. I see. Uh, well, also, Peter, I, I just wanted to add, to include this. In 2007, you know, there were reports that foreign media uh, is accused of uh, inflaming crisis. And so did that, like, sort of force you guys to be more careful this time around or or not? No, I, I mean, I, I was working for a different organization, the BBC, back in 2007. So it's difficult for me to compare the two, the two companies. But I think... You know, in any event, we, we would be very, very careful about how we report things. Uh, this is a volatile situation. Everyone is painfully aware of what happened last time around. Yeah. But I, I don't think too many of us really felt that we were responsible for inflaming the tensions. Clearly, we, we need to be very careful about how we manage our language. We need to be very balanced in the way that we, we report and cover things. But... What took place in 2007, 2008 was fueled as much by local coverage as it was by local political leaders. Um, the numbers of people that were watching this according to international media certainly wasn't significant. I see. Well, th Peter, thank you so much for coming on Sahara TV today. That's a pleasure. Um, hold on, Peter. I think I may have just one more question for you before you go. Um, Sure. Do you think that we have an idea of who's leading now? I mean, I know you've talked about Kenyatta, but Kenyatta, but can you just tell us, since you said that not all the votes have been counted, so should we just go by what we have, or do you think we have an idea of who's leading right now? No, I don't think we really do have an idea of who's leading. I mean, it's, 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 one of the problems with this election is that um, we, we have no real history. Remember, this is a new constitution uh, with new electoral districts. And so we don't have a record of, of we don't have any history of, or, or any statistics of the way that uh, various districts might have voted in the past. So we've got nothing to compare. We can't really, we can't really talk about swings or trends within certain districts to, to draw conclusions about the way the electorate may be moving this time around. I see. Um, so I think we just need to take those numbers at face value, 56 to 40 percent um, of the gap that seems to be closing. So maybe by tomorrow or something, we would have a better understanding. Yeah, it's going to take a few hours, but um, you know, we're, we're still, I'd say another four or five hours, maybe more. Uh, it'll be early tomorrow morning, local time. Okay. Thank you very much once again for coming on Sahara TV. We appreciate your time. Okay, it's a pleasure. So viewers, that has been Peter Gresti, Grester, sorry, he's a foreign correspondent with Al Jazeera currently in uh, Kenya covering the election. Stay tuned, we have more people that will talk about this ongoing election. We'll be right back.